The typical day on Camino de Santiago is walk, picnic time, eat, sleep, and repeat. Hey. And these are the three biggest fear of every pilgrim. But how far and how long to walk is actually the really personal choice depending on your time and abilities. And what about diet? The diet is also kind of personal thing because you can eat this or that and that's all, it depends on you. And sleep? And the sleep part is a bit trickier because the last thing you want is not to have a good night's sleep after all day of walking. So is sleeping bag necessary? What are the other items that will allow you for the next great day of sleep and what things to avoid? This is all to be revealed in today's episode. Right, let's go! So we are Camino Terrors and we walk Camino on a daily basis. We just finished Camino Portuguese, started from Porto, and we are getting ready for the French Camino. And by the way, comment down below what is the Camino that you want to do or you did, and let's have some good conversations. We check different types of accommodation, especially taking into account the quality of sleep. How does it work? Will you sleep in the middle of the forest with the wolves? Will you step sleep next to the smelly vagabond with the ginger beard? Or will you freeze to death in some albergue in the middle of Spain? Let us tell you what we discovered on this trip. There are four types of accommodation. Hotels. So you get your own private room. You get your bed, you get your bathroom, you get your nobody snoring around and smelling only you, if, if it's actually the case, because you might not smell after days of walking. Not. You, they give you bed sheets, pillows, they give you everything. They even give you a towel. That's the hotel. You pay, you get. And you know what? You also get a picnic in the morning if you start early because some of the hotels have the breakfast included. Three, two, one. No, no need, need for, for sleeping, sleeping bag. Private rooms and private hostels. So there are different types of albergues you can find, like those ones which are private and the private ones. If you like it or not, they have all the commodities that you can think of. Nice towels, cool blankets as well as proper sheets. And this is a bit less fancy way. It's still fully equipped because you're gonna get your towel, you're gonna get your sheets, you're gonna even get your blanket, but you know the sheets are not gonna be snow white and the mattress might be a little bit older. It's gonna be more like a homey feeling sleeping in your grandmother's house or in some other less hotelish uh, conditions. It's gonna be comfortable, it's gonna have an extra heating probably and you will be served a nice a drink or coffee or tea in the morning. So one more time, no, no need for, for a sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. Public albergue. So this is before seven o'clock on one of those days in albergue, kind of private, kind of municipal, as you see. You get like this super tiny sheet made out of nothing and the little tiny sheet for the pillow and that possible uh, it's a lining this is called Thank disposable lining. Uh -huh. disposable lining at this time you know hard to say and that's all so probably in the public albergues you would be worried because it sounds like everyone goes to the private albergues and that's actually true. There's a main accommodation for all the pilgrims, but worry not, fear not, because that's not dirty at all. They keep it basic, but they keep it clean. Have we encountered any dirty albergues? Not at all. And even more, the, the material that the beds and the pillows are made of, they're specially prepared just to repel the bed bugs, which someone on the way could happen. But again, 
Worry not, fear not. What do you get in public albergues, Erika? Just the basics. Place to sleep, in the shower, somewhere where to wash your clothes. And do you get like a blanket? No, not usually. And the public albergues, we strongly recommend you that this sleeping bag you should take with you. Take it or not to take it? This is the question. And the four is camping. And as a reminder, while camping in Spain is illegal. And if you want to know and more information about where to camp on the Camino de Santiago and also the general information for every pilgrim, check our freshly uh, published ebook guide. This is in a question and answer form, so it's easy to digest. It has a thousands, thousands of hundreds of questions and answers. No, no, not thousands, but many. And you can also become a member and help us to provide this free information <laughs> to every pilgrim like you. And you know what? Being a member has a special perks. You get the access to the all Q&A sessions with hundreds of tips about Camino de Santiago and extra content as well. And you know what? This new ebook guide that we are just launched, which is five stars on Amazon, you can get it for free. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So, join. And coming back to our Camino camping, I think it's the information for absolutely new video because you will need a sleeping bag, but also you need a tent, you will need a, a sleeping pad and many other things. So you will need it all. So according to your uh, preferences and budget, you can choose one of these types of accommodations. But you know what? The type of sleeping bag will also depend on the time of the year you choose to do your Camino. Because if you're gonna go in summer, there could be other options like a quill, like a bed sheet, or maybe like a little blanket, but why would you need 10 degree sleeping bag with you if outside is 40? So have it in mind. But if your Camino is somewhere around April and May, if your Camino is somewhere around September and, and October, you consider taking your Camino. But which one to take? Taking your Camino. No, which sleeping bag? This Celestia Porta Mi Via. And you can consider taking your Camino. No, I haven't said that. Si. No. You are going to listen to it afterwards. <laughs> I haven't said that. Say it, say it again. I haven't said that. Die. So depending on the time of the year, you simply consider taking the sleeping bag, would you or not? But which one to take? Should I choose a domed sleeping bag or a synthetic one? I think, baby, that that depends all of the pockets. Size, money, pocket, size. You know money, you know money. Yeah, money, money, money. It depends money. on your budget. It depends on your budget, exactly. Because if your budget is big, you can afford to get the dawn sleeping bag. It is more expensive, but it's less bulky. You might just squeeze it probably everywhere, and uh, it's going to be a good, long lasting purchase. But if you're all kind of tight, on the budget, you might consider buying the synthetic one. It's not really big, as you see. This one is made for how many degrees? This is for 15 degrees. 15 degrees. Or 59 uh, Fahrenheit. And it's around 600 grams. It's going to be similarly warm and it's going to cost you less money. But this one is bulkier for Sure. But you know, there is one thing that people are worrying a lot when buying a sleeping bag. You know which one is this? Folding it to its bag every day. So guys, if you're actually worried about folding your bag, fear not because nowadays you don't have to fold anything in the perfect size. All you have to do, you have to squeeze your bag inside of its cover as fast as one minute. Would you like to try? Go. No, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> Did 
take the wire, take the wire, take the wire, take the wire, take the wire. <sighs> okay, guys. And that's how you fold your sleeping bag. And there are another two parts of this. No, another. There are two others. Two other the items. And there are two other items that are necessary for the good night's sleep. I can see you, baby, yeah? <laughs> don't, do, don't do stuff, eh? don't put... There are two other important um, items on the Camino de Santiago that will allow you for the good night's sleep, which would be the headband, because people like to walk when you sleep around and turn on the light at five o'clock in the morning. So this one can save your sleep and also earplugs. If you're fed up with your couple, you don't want to listen to people anymore, or well, simply the snoring is not your favorite sound on this planet. So can I just say something? Okay. You're not fed up with a couple. The couple, it's me and you. You're fed up with a the partner, then go on. Okay, but anyway, guys, don't mind. This is the, the couple problems. Probably you have it as well. If not, be a couple with someone, <laughs> you will see how it's be to a be couple. a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and that's all. That's pretty much that. So these are the uh, ideas of uh, how to have a great night's sleep. And for more information, there are going to be a few videos here and there about other important items you have to take with you in Camino de Santiago and also Erika will make an English course for people because she's so good with English and correcting people when they make the interviews and stuff, right? Buen Camino! Buen Camino! <laughs> A little bit more to here? <laughs> Não posso...